All right, so while we're talking about connectivity and plug and play, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to record some music using the Casio keyboard and a Mac computer. This is GarageBand we're using. Um, you can use the Casio keyboards with either Mac or PC. The beauty of the Mac, there's two things, two reasons we prefer to use Mac. Firstly, there's no need to install drivers. If you plug a Casio into a Mac, it recognises a Casio keyboard instantly. We don't have to do any pre-work, any installation of any software or anything. The second thing is that Mac computers come packaged with GarageBand. So we don't actually have to buy a, a, a mini recording program or download one. It's, it's just simpler. It's, it's literally, if you own a MacBook or a Mac computer, you can plug a Casio keyboard into it and it will just work. And we'll show you, in fact, when we plug the keyboard in, the keyboard will actually appear on the screen and the notes that I play will also show on the keyboard. So again, coming back to our plug and play pack, this is the second lead that comes with the plug and play pack and this is a USB cable. Does anybody not know what a USB cable is? Everybody does? I'll assume from your silence. <laughs> All right. um, once upon a time, we needed MIDI cables to connect to computers, and it wasn't that simple either. We either needed an interface, or we needed a special MIDI cable called a sound card MIDI cable. Or, once the USB first came out, we needed a MIDI to USB converter. There, there are all sorts of evolutionary changes that happened, but it's really simple now because all computers use USB, just about everything, keyboards, um, mice, are they mice or mouses? Cameras, computer ones. Cameras. Everything. everything connects to computer with a USB cable, including keyboards. So, again, what we're going to do is plug the USB cable, one end into the back of the keyboard, just there, and the other end into Nicole's Mac. Into my USB port right here. And now you'll see straight away on the screen, I've not loaded any drivers to this computer, but it sees it straight away. Can we see the keyboard there? Yes, you can. Can you see those notes playing? That's as simple as that. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use all of the sounds from the computer, not the keyboard. And these are the sounds that come for free with GarageBand. They come built into the program. Another new track. So I've just gone track, new track, and I'm just hitting OK for software instrument. OK, so now I've got some tracks here. So the first one, I'm going to choose a drum kit. I'll choose a rock kit. And just before you hit record, I'll just explain what we're going to do with the controller. We'll do that first, this. actually, because then we'll hear the sounds. What's happening now is those drums you're hearing are actually coming from the Mac. We're also hearing the piano sound, which is coming out of the Casio. So just to show you that Casios can cut it in the, in the, in the sort of studio recording end of things, or home studio recording end of, end of the musical spectrum, that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this as a MIDI controller. Um, so basically we're, we're, we're performing some pro functions essentially with what was once upon a time just known as a home keyboard. Now the other thing that we've done here is I've actually got our little audio cable that we were running the iPod through. I've got that coming from the headphone out on the computer so that we're hearing the sounds through the keyboard speakers. If I was to just play it through the computer it would sound fairly tinny because of fairly average speakers. And you all wouldn't be able to hear it very clearly either because the speakers are so small. So again, yeah, we're just using that exact same cable that we used with the iPod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the function menu and I'm going to select MIDI. Then I'm going to scroll to local. At the moment the local is turned on. And what we mean by local is we mean the internal sound generator, the internal brain of this instrument. As soon as I hit off, the piano disappears. So the internal tone generator of this keyboard is now switch completely off and all we're hearing now is the Mac computer and we're accessing all the sounds which remain touch sensitive so all the commands of the keyboard are going to the Mac which is velocity the time that nodes are held everything that we do even if I use sustain it'll, it'll recognize that as a program command and the Mac will give us exactly what we expect to get by I'll the way bring we up play. A, a hip hop kit so you can demonstrate the difference. And if I change to a different sound, we've got a piano. And I actually want to leave that on piano. My hip hop kit, I want to make it a rock kit. So what Nicole is doing here is basically creating the recording environment as we call it. All it really is is She's basically simulating a little band setup. She's creating a bass instrument, a drummer, 
um, probably some piano, some strings, Try that as a all ready to go. So that all I need to do is key those those notes in for each part, and we're done. So what have we got now? I'm just doing some horns. Stinky. Probably a little loud for horns, but. And as we'll show you once we've recorded, again. You don't always get it right in the first run. What we like to do is record the song, then go back and mix the song. Because until you've actually got all the tracks laid down, it's a bit hard to sort of take a guess at how loud each particular track ne needs to be or which side you know, of the room instruments need to be panned to and that type of thing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm turning the metronome off because Paul likes to play without the metronome because if he plays with it, it shows how badly he's out of time. <laughs> So we'll turn that off. The later in the day it gets, the worse I get. <laughs> but one thing you can do, if you play with the metronome, it allows you to quantize your music. So what you can do is you can instruct the computer to put your music in time with the metronome. So that's one benefit. But we're not going to do that. You'll notice I tap my foot because I have my own internal metronome. Oh, I see. So that's why I don't okay. use yours. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with the rock kit. I'm just going to hit record. I've got track one selected here, which is my rock kit. And... Ready whenever you are. Now hit stop. But that's all the MIDI information that we've got here. So that's basically what Paul's just recorded. And that's showing us the notes that are being played, length of time, and pressure. So that's what MIDI information is. And this is basically a language so that when the computer plays it back, it understands what it's playing. So we're going to go to the next track, piano, and go back here where we started. For some reason I didn't start at number one. the screen and it gives us the freedom to do whatever we want. Right at hard over to the right, yep. all the way over, and the horns hard over to the left. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. So can you hear the drums are on this side now? 